Hello everyone, this is Azaralis, and we are back again with some more Warframe. We're going to be talking about my Excalibur build today, and we're also going to be taking a look at the Adorax. Uh, I'm going to just do a little precursor here, guys. Get an Adorax. Uh, as you can see, it's at max rank now. And, guys, I couldn't put it down once I started playing with it. And I'll tell you why I went ahead and I did that. Uh, I was going to write this off and not pick it up until I noticed its base crit chance. And it's at a 25%, which puts it at the exact same amount of base, base crit chance as the dual Ickers. Now, I am a huge dual Icker fanboy. I have played with those things for just, it feels like just a millennia. Uh, those things have been on my hip. Well, guys, if I can have a whip with the same kind of crit capabilities, then I have a longer range tool that's going to give me those crits that I want. And that is huge. Oh, man, it feels good. It feels so good. Uh, and I will show you how I build this before we talk about the x -Cal. Uh There's a couple different ways you can go, guys. This one right here is going straight slash damage, which isn't totally ideal, but it is still insanely effective against Infested. Uh, I'm getting similar crit, rank, or crit levels to uh, the exact same kind of damage I was doing with my dual acres, uh, with a slight loss in damage overall and that is completely made up by the fact that i have so much more range i have exponentially more range than the dual acres has and anyone who runs an orthos prime as opposed to anything else anyone who runs a sero understands just how vital range is uh and th it is no more true than right here in the adorax so another build that i use in uh in uh infested content guys is i will swap out this rending strike right here for quite simply a uh where is it a volcanic edge so that i can have some cc and i can have dot damage and all around fire does increase damage against infested uh light infested so it will help me clear out waves a little bit easier uh all in all guys though slash damage has increased damage against all forms of infested except for sinew which uh the only sinew boss is forid so how often do you fight for it? Uh, everybody else is going to take increased damage from Slash, so there you go. Also, Slash damage is going to do increased damage against Corpus Flesh and Grenier Flesh. So if you find out ways to handle the other parts of them, i.e. shields and armor, you're going to do huge amounts of damage with this thing. Because it, both of them take a 25% damage increase when you're attacking them uh, without their stuff. Really, the main drawback of Slash is actually against Robotics. Uh, robotics and Alloy Armor. Uh, everything else can be handled. Uh, especially Shields, because Shields are pretty easy to deal with with things like Magnetic Procs and all those kind of things, or having a Mag Prime in your crew. Uh, so, should you get it? Heck yeah, you should get it. This thing is so much fun. Holy cow, I can't wait to go ahead and get this. You are definitely going to see this in some video gameplay here in the near future because I am just hooked. This thing is so much fun. Uh, definitely, guys, get yourself a Burning Wasp. I believe I have a couple more uh, if you need one. I have so many Burning Wasps. Dude, just hit me up in-game and be like, hey, man, I'm getting the Adorax. I need a Burning Wasp, and I will hook you up with a Burning Wasp. Uh, this guy, a couple of his combos are really cool. Uh, you can hardly tell when you actually use Sparking Torture, but uh, Guided Claw is really cool. You can actually use this thing to practically snipe a guy. That's how far the range goes out when you use that combo right there, Guided Claw. Because the last shot, you'll rear back and you'll fire straight forward. Using the maximum extent of the Adorax's range. And when you get used to using it, because you can aim it uh, in a level uh, attack field, it is just sweet. Oh man, is it sweet. You can't shoot it up, which I was really disappointed about. I was really hoping that I could like actually use it like it was some kind of projectile weapon, but it's kind of in a level playing field. You need to be on a similar uh, surface to the other enemy when you use that, but once you get used to it, it is so sweet. You could be standing a very except exceptional distance from like a Toxic Ancient, and you can go ahead and go through that combo and smack him with that right at the end. And when you're channeling and all those kind of things, you're going to do great damage. 
It also accents perfectly because I'm using it on the Excalibur. That means that I can go through part of that combo uh, and I can realize that somebody's over there. I can blind them, then go through the whole combo again and tap them from an extreme long range. It takes a lot of finesse, but oh man, is it so much fun. So, uh, summary, get yourself an Atarax. This thing is sweet. Oh my gosh, having so much fun. Uh, and look forward to the gameplay content that's going to be involved with that. Uh, there will definitely be a lot. Uh, so guys, let's talk about my Excalibur. The reason I wanted to go ahead and couple these two together is because uh, the Atarax actually works extremely well on an Excalibur. But one of the first things I want to say, which is the reason I'm going ahead and coming out with this video, guys, is that there's been a lot of people who have been messaging me, asking me how to build their Excaliburs, uh, and telling me stories about how people were telling them that they, they were bad and things like that, and that you couldn't use them, and blah, blah, blah. Guys, here's the deal. Excalibur is amazing. He is amazing. Radial Blind is amazing. But there's a few things you need to understand. Because what I did was I went ahead and I started doing some research on what other people's opinions are. Because I know what mine is. I want to know what other people think who play Excalibur 2. And one of the most horrific things that I've seen is a common practice with Excaliburs is triple formatting this guy. These people don't understand what's actually important in Endgame, guys. The reason Radial Blind is so good is not the duration of the blind. The duration of the blind is 15 seconds. That's perfectly legitimate period of time. Do not change the duration of your blind. If you were like, say, in a straight melee group, you might think about increasing it a little tiny bit. Any other point in time, guys, you want to be constantly reusing this thing. Not enough to put a, a fleeting expertise on, but you want to be constantly reusing this thing. Now, what I'm showing you guys right here is my build for Excalibur. What we've got here, guys, is we have redirection and vitality for our personal tankiness. We have flow and streamline and rage for our energy management going along with our energy siphon. It is completely imperative that we have the capability to go ahead and continue using radial blinds. Now, before we go any further, I want you to pay a very close attention to right here. There is no formas on this Excalibur. And that's because when you actually understand what's important about being an Excalibur in high-level content, you realize that there is no point in ever putting a form on this guy. There is two acceptable reasons to put a form on this guy. The first one is for increased tankiness. So if you wanted to put a Vigor or something like that, you could throw on a form or two to get on something that's going to give you even more tankiness to keep you alive longer. Uh, which is still rather nearsighted, because if you are aware of your surroundings and you are using Radial Blind properly, you are not going to have to. This is going to be plenty of tankiness. So, next up, we've got added stamina if you're going to be running him in a melee build if you want to be in there doing melee damage that would be another reason you might very very slim reason that you might want to go ahead and form a, your your uh, excal but to be perfectly honest guys there is no reason to form this excal at all this build right here will take you through any content that this game throws at you the real big deal here guys is that we want to continue using radial blind Oftentimes we're going to use Radial Blind again before those 15 seconds are up anyway. Because we want the stun. That's what's going to save people's lives. That's what's going to set people up to take out mobs. That's what's important. Now, power duration doesn't increase the stun at all. So, there is no point in putting any constitutions, continuities, narrow-mindeds, anything on your build. Onto an Excal. Leave him completely normal. Give him... A, an overextended, give him a quick rest to give him some stamina so that he can stay mobile and use his melee when he wants to. Uh, the rage is here to go ahead and give us a secondary buffer zone because if we start taking damage, we're instantly going to want to radial blind. If you are taking damage to your health, radial blind. 
That's the reaction you need. Immediate radial, radial point. Now, as a final note before we go ahead and close this video up, guys, don't take your slash dash off your build. This is two points. That's it. That's all it is. It's just two points. This is two points for an, a massive range mobility tool. This is going to get you into where you need to be to use your radial blind, and it's going to get you out of trouble. No, this thing doesn't do good damage, no matter what you do. You can run him in a complete and total damage base build, and it's going to be okay. The fact of the matter is, is that Slash Dash is going to allow you to get in and get out of trouble. And it's only two points. Don't take it off. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. So, anyway guys, thank you for watching. This is the way that I run Xcal. Uh, I run him in high level content. I absolutely adore running him in, uh, in defense missions because Radial Blind is fantastic when everybody's trying to get to a certain point. When all your enemies are trying to pile in on a certain area, you can just keep constantly maximizing the amount of stuns you're getting out of it. And it makes it very, very easy for your melee team members and yourself to just wade in there and just stomp all over them. Fantastic. Love this. Love this Warframe. I love that Adorax. Guys, definitely go get yourself an Adorax. So, anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I'm Azaralis. This was how I run uh, Xcal. Definitely going to be doing some videos on him here. Uh, the only other things on here, of course, is a Boltor Prime and a Nucor. Very, very self-explanatory. We've got the Boltor Prime because it's super elite DPS. And then we've got the Nucor so that it will go ahead and be doing viral and radiation procs. I can pop this open so you guys can see the way I run it. Just to let you know. Pretty straightforward. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Azaralis, and I'm out of here. Peace.